people and, and preach and all that kind of stuff. She taught them. She used to sit in the crowd and, and based on her response, told him what he needed to do. You know, if she said, hallelujah, that, that might have meant uh, it's time to raise the money uh, or whatever. But however she reacted, he, that's how he responded and began to move on the people. And he was just trained to do this. I mean, it just was like, it, it's on YouTube too. Go look, type, type, type in Marjo. Check that out. That movie is such an eye opener to just the game that goes on in church. It didn't just start this year. It's been going on for years. Now, do you have real people that's doing stuff? Absolutely. Should you release your money to help uh, uh, ministries? Absolutely. But be looking for the characteristics and actions. Are they of God or are they of themselves? Are they of the false prophet or are they of the Holy Ghost? And first of all, if you're not in a local church paying your tithes and sowing your seed there and that church isn't doing something to bring forth the kingdom of God in the earth, in their region, in their city, in their neighborhood, in their state, what not. Uh, you might need to find somewhere to sow your money, but keep it, keep it where you can see. I mean, you ought to be able to be blessed by the fruit. Uh, you ought to be blessed by the seed, you know. Something, something ought to be given to you other than a telecast. Um, I mean, is that really all you need? Because if so, then I'm going to stop having church and I'm going to go on TV instead. Uh, because it's the most baffling thing that 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 here you are trying to to do things for the kingdom. And you can't seem to get people to buy into what you do on the local level because everybody's so mesmerized by, by uh, what's on TV. Not knocking nobody. Uh, there's people on TV that's doing right things and, and doing teaching truth and stuff like that. But you got to be able to discern the spirit by the spirit. So which means you got to have the Holy Spirit yourself. Uh, but but, but uh, most of us uh, won't even get involved with local churches. And I can understand we've picked some of some bad pastors. Well, understand that every pastor is the same kind of pastor. But there are some people like that Jeremiah three fifteen uh, that reflect Jeremiah three fifteen. Pastors after God on heart. So number thirteen, and we're almost through. They appeal to the lustful desires of sinful human nature. They appeal to the lustful desires of sinful human nature. Uh, they'll tell you exactly what you want to hear, basically. Uh, if you're single, your husband or your wife is coming. If you're trying to open up a business, you, you're going to get uh, X amount of dollars. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I hear God saying, if you sow this $1,500, you may not even feel like you got it. But when you sow this, God said 10000 is coming and all that kind of stuff. Why, why do you buy into that? You might as well go play the lottery. Take your $1,500 and go buy 1500 lottery tickets. About the same endeavor. Uh... You know, uh, stuff like that. And the first problem is, if God is telling them, how come he didn't tell you first? Because let me tell you, my experience is, before I went to a service with a friend of mine who is very much so a prophetic uh, 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 man of God, who said God has challenged somebody to sow more. It might be 200, it might be 300, whatever. God had already said that in my spirit. I looked at my wife, didn't say nothing to her. She got me and she said, are you going to do that? Uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. So, so we, 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 I will personally sow according to what God says, not because of that, what no man say. If God ain't said it to me first, and you ain't confirming what God has said to me, uh, we ain't about to release nothing. Not, not one, not one dime, not one dime. But most people get all caught up in emotions because everybody's looking for that supernatural, quick, fast, and a hurry thing. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. My belief is prosperity has nothing to do with God directly per se. Because if that was the case, why is the dope dealer prosper? If that was the case, why does the drug addict, musician, alcoholic, women, women abuser uh, uh, achieve greatness? Uh, 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 why is it that, that uh, 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 Saddam Hussein became a, 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 a rich, wealthy person? How come uh, Hitler became the the uh, the the dictator the dictator of Germany uh, was that was a prosperous 
position did God put them there no they worked hard they used principle natural principles they put into work if you work hard at it, if you stay steady if you equip yourself to achieve something dope dealing whatever you can be successful for the believer we know that God empowers us because the Bible says that God has empowered us to create wealth but he hasn't just he's not just going to give it the key word is create so he gives us ability to do things now if we work the process of our abilities and we use our abilities it will create wealth but the purpose of wealth is not just for your own benefit in fact of factions it is for you to further the kingdom of God and so I'm not against prosperity but I am against people telling you the prosperity is just like like all that God is concerned about he's not looking at you just prospering financially but he's looking for you to be a whole balanced person the first key is being uh, receiving the gift of the Spirit of God the second is receiving the gift of a Holy Ghost filled Bible teaching pastor yes that's what I said because Ephesians chapter 4 says that he gives these gifts to the body It's five of them the apostle the teacher the evangelist the prophet and the pastor and so so these are gifts so we ought to desire uh, these anointings in our life because they prosper us spiritually bringing us to the uh, to unity and all that kind of stuff so 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 there's there's so many different phases you don't have to be saved in order to be prosperous prosperous hello so why do we think that once we get saved that we're going to be prosperous I think that's just false in itself because if you're not applying yourself if you're not doing anything you sending in seeds is not going to get you a return it don't work like that again you might as well be playing the lottery you have a better chance of re uh, being rewarded that way uh, so 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 we got to stop buying into these lies because most people are all all they talking about is money all they're talking about is you having a car and you having a house and you having your husband and your love and your lustful desires being covered they tell you stuff that that makes you feel good the homosexual is loved by God the homosexual it was created by God God understands where you are God loves everybody we all have seen and come fell short of the glory of God yeah but once we come into God we no longer fall hello because we are in the glory Amen. In the glory of God. And so, so now, now, no, we're still not worthy, but you can't tell me that you can stay bound by the same thing you know Jesus. It's just no way in the world is possible. The woman in John 8 that was brought to Jesus uh, because she committed adultery. What did Jesus say to her? Go and sin no more. He said that to numerous and countless people. What about the woman at the well? In John chapter 4, uh, he meets this woman who had six husbands and the one that she was with was and her she saw and met Jesus and her life was changed so much so she went and sparked a revival in Samaria and you got to understand that in Acts in the New Testament and everything Samaria was one of the powerful areas for the Christian church that did not start uh, just after uh after the the day of Pentecost, but it started at John chapter four when Jesus, uh, when that woman had an encounter with Jesus. We got to understand when we have an encounter with Jesus Christ, it absolutely changes your life. Saul on the road to Damascus got knocked off his beast and was blinded by the glory of God, and it changed his life forever. Forever. It, was he perfect by his own admittance? No. Had he achieved? By his own admittance, no. However, did it change his life? Absolutely, yes. When Jesus met the 12 apostles or 12 disciples, uh, Judas was even changed. Y'all, you got to stop misconstruing that, that Judas understood who Christ was, but he thought that he could force Jesus into his way of thinking, uh, force Jesus into his need for what he wanted Jesus to do. The very same spirit we have today. We don't conform to Jesus. We want Jesus to conform to us we want him to do what we, he we want him to do versus him working in his time and doing what he is supposed to do in the uh, uh the order that he's supposed to do in our lives we want him to do it the way we want judas wasn't just turning on christ just being a betrayer we i think we paint that picture wrong judas wanted to see the kingdom of god in the earth so he assumed that if these people arrested jesus that jesus would be 
be forced to bring his kingdom on the earth realm. Now understanding the process, even though Jesus told him what process he had to go through. Even Peter told Jesus, Lord, I will not let this happen. You will not die. And Jesus rebuked him, said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get thee behind me, Satan. Remember, he told him that, uh, that, that this was of, of Satan. And so we ought to understand, however, that when Jesus... Had, uh, when these 12 men had an encounter with Jesus, their lives was changed forever, especially when they saw him risen from the dead, especially when.